Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Brandon Johnson, and I'm about to take you for a ride on an absolutely gorgeous Sea Ray 290 Sunday. our channel. I've been passionately selling boats for over 19 years. The purpose of this channel is to help you and your family enjoy boats and boating just as much as my family and I enjoy it. So thanks to the help of my staff here at Heartland Marine and my sons, we've been able to successfully upload hundreds of boat reviews, instructional operation, help, and how-to videos. I don't ask for anything in return except for the opportunity to possibly help you find a boat in your time frame. So to stay up on everything we upload, click that subscribe button below and stay tuned. Nice. Now, once you have your plug in the boat and your boat's in the water, because it's got to be in the water to run, come back here, starboard side gunnel. Inside the gunnel, here's your battery switch, which is a convenient place simply because usually you got to move a bunch of stuff to get to the battery switch. So to go boating, we're going to turn it to both. The alternator is going to keep both of the motors charged while we're out there having fun. If we're going to stop and cove out, listen to the radio, we'll go ahead and switch it to one or two. It really doesn't matter. If the boat doesn't start, when we pull up the anchor and get back out there, we'll switch it back to both or to the other battery. That's fully charged. Take off, go back home, do whatever we want. When we're done for the day, shut it off. But we got it on both. In order to keep this video from being two hours long, I'm gonna include a lot of links down in the description below. Links include, um, you know, how to tie ropes, how to dock boats, what to do when your boat won't start, how to operate tilt and trim, just all valid things to help improve your boat ownership experience. So for this 290 Sun Deck, one of the reasons Sea Ray is such an elite brand is for years they've surveyed their customers and really watched warranty claims. They've said, you know, what do you like about your boat? What would you change about it if you could? So that's how we get such a highly engineered and well thought out model. Uh, one problem you have sometimes in boats is breaking the key off of the dash. So right here with Sea Ray, we have a ignition switch above the helm in the storage here. So go ahead and turn that to on. Now, with our digital throttle and shift, which is electric shifting, it's super freaking smooth. We can just hit the button, start, and it fires right up. Go ahead and put our bolster seat down. So, if the boat doesn't start, be sure to refer to the, one of the videos down there. So, now we'll start with the shifting. I said in my last video, I gotta quit saying so, so much, so I'm sorry about that. All right, shifting, it's really easy. You only have to push the button in when you engage it into gear. So forward, there's a definitive catch. Did you guys hear the big bang? It's because there's not one. The, Digital throttle and shift with the Bravo 3 shifts extremely smooth. Coming back to neutral, for reverse, same way. There's a definitive catch right here and your throttle range is beyond that. Definitive catch just means there's a stopping point. Now, as you accelerate, I've had a lot of people that become excited to drive and I'm always excited to drive myself. But when they accelerate, they have the finger right here on the trim up button. Zoom in on that, Bill. Let's get real close. So they push down and then they bring the out drive out of the water, then the boat doesn't go anywhere. So just be aware of that. What I wanna do now for this part of the video is look at all of our buttons and switches, as well as our gauges. Then I'll take the camera from Bill and we'll go for a drive. First off right here, we have tilt steering. So we can kind of set this wherever we want it. We have a stereo remote control right here. So we can crank that up. Sounds good, it's got the factory upgraded stereo with tweeters. Buttons horn, water pump, that builds up pressure to the water system. We usually don't mess with that a whole lot because if it's really hot outside, it will smell like sewage. It's also winterized, there's antifreeze in it. Bilge pump's automatic, you'll probably never use it, but the National Marine Manufacturers Association that governs how boats are built says all boats have to have a manual bilge pump button. Blower, that ventilates the engine compartment. Most certified captains are gonna tell you at idle speed you should have your blower on, but I know you can't smell in this video, but you can see, and as you can see, there's no smoke back there. None whatsoever. This multi-core injected engines run very smooth. So over here we have docking lights, which are the headlights up front if it has it. Navigation lights, driving at nighttime. That's the red and green built in, and the white light up top. All the way down's off. Anchor light stopped at night, just the white light. 
cockpit lights. That's a three-way switch. It must do something different. Oh, this is cool. It's got the blue LEDs up in the gunnels. That's really neat. Down does something else. Wiper. Remember, these wipers are made for a splash, not a rainstorm. What holds the wiper on there is a screw that's that big right there. Um, anchor. Also, right here, we can turn up our volume for our radio, turn it back down, and change the channel. This boat's equipped with SmartCraft instrumentation, and that all that means is digitally everything you could ever want to know, plus a lot more, is right here in the gauge. So that shows our trim angle, fuel, 88%, RPM set for Smart Tow, so we can have basically a cruise control for our different wake borders, etc. Water pressure, 284 hours, 13 volts, gallons used, RPM, uh, depth. So now, most people just leave that on depth. As you use your tilt and trim, it'll take over that little LCD, and after a few seconds, when you're done trimming it, it goes back off. So right here, we have our tachometer. To declutter the dash, c has a four-in-one gauge, which includes fuel, tilt and trim, engine temperature, and oil pressure, okay? So one thing I definitely will point out too, Sea Ray's an elite brand also because they're owned by Brunswick. Brunswick owns Mercury Mercruiser. Anything Mercury Mercruiser comes out with, it's made exclusive to Sea Ray. It's not available to anyone else for many, many years. They also want to keep a lot of their components in-house under the Brunswick parent ownership name, whatever that means. So they came out with their own line of gauges, which is great. These are beautiful. Most of the time they're cracked. These are not. So it's very, very well kept and the dash panels are shiny. So I hope that explains our systems. Now it's time to go for a boat ride. Okay, now let's go for a hardcore boat demonstration. So we're just idling along here. It's an absolutely beautiful day. I'm rocking the short sleeves. How to break out sunglasses. Billy's got the man bun. We're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so to give you a fair assessment, stop saying so, so much, Brandon. Back to neutral. Stop our forward momentum. Just like that. Come back to neutral. Now, a boat this size, the 92 i typically would be slow to plane. Not this one. I gotta scoot the seat up because I'm too short to reach the pedals. There we go. Not this one. So usually for water sports or whatever, we'd get the slack out of the line. Then we go ahead and punch it. So what I want to do is I want to run the boat, trim down, put the biggest load on it. That way you can see if it hit, misses, spits, sputters, backfires, and falls on its face. We're also going to find a comfortable cruise speed, and we're going to see what our top speed is. Look at that. I mean, virtually no bow rise for a boat this size. And our trim tabs are, in fact, up, and we'll talk about how to work those. So really, let's just come back off here to play with this. So we're under 3,000 RPM. We're running 28 mile an hour, and this is absolutely a comfortable cruise speed. Wake off the back is gorgeous, great shape to it for water sports, and we're riding extremely well. Remember, I've got it trimmed all the way down. So our good cruise speed, you know, anything under 3,500 RPM gives us our best fuel burn. Right here, right here. And this is comfortable, so let's punch it, baby. Woo so trimmed all the way down, we're forcing that nose down. So this is the part of the demonstration where if the boat doesn't run good, we're gonna feel it, we're gonna see us bouncing around, we're gonna see us failing. All we're doing is picking up speed while pushing the boat down. Extremely impressive. 40 mile an hour trimmed all the way down, okay? Now let's trim it up. One, two, See our trim angle, allowed us to increase our RPM. Speed's getting over 40, five, six. Now we're really getting up on top of the water, 4,600 RPM, trimmed about halfway up, 60% trim angle, and we're running 48 miles an hour. Let's give it a few more clicks. Let's hit 50, I want 50. Come on now, come on now. Wind's in her face, 49, 49 turn back around i know we can hit 50 because we just did it billy did when i did the drone shots also power steering hold on bill this baby turns extremely smooth turns on a dime if you drop the little guy look at that ah! it's a big ass ski boat it's crazy how this thing holds true too in the turn look at that look absolutely excellent i'm super impressed truly am 
can't believe it. So we're going to trim back down and we're going to come off and I'm going to hand the camera to Bill. We're going to talk about a few things. So, whoopsie daisies. Go ahead at that. Going so fast my dad got a microphone and flipped around. There, that's good enough. That's going to be loose. Okay. Now, I want to talk about how to operate your trim tabs. So a lot of times when people have something new, like a new system, a new feature, they're super excited and they play with it too much. Trim tabs are extremely easy to operate. If you don't need them, don't, don't use them. A lot of boats don't even have them. But this boat has them, we're gonna teach you how to use them. So I get the boat, I'm quit saying so, so much. I get the boat on plane or whatever speed you want. So as we know, this boat planes off before it even hits 3000 RPM. Let's find that cruise speed. Trim tabs are made for lateral stability. So if we have any too many people, we're having too many on one side of the boat and it leans, we can just use our tabs to lean it back out. So let's slow back down here. What we use them for on this lake is when it's rougher than heck and we can't enjoy ourselves, we put them both down. By putting them down, water grabs them and forces the nose of the boat up. So always pick something straight ahead of you. I'm gonna pick the tallest tree straight ahead. So I'm driving straight. If you're turning while you're setting your tabs, it's not gonna work real good. So to show you that they work, straight ahead, I'm gonna do one side. I'm not touching the wheel. And as you can see, we're starting to turn. We're turning away from the tree back to the cove here. About 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It's how long it takes to come back up. Now notice straight ahead, we're not anywhere near pointed to the big tall tree anymore. So let's go back to the big tall tree. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're gonna put the other one down. Not touching the wheel. Once again, now we're turning away from the tree. Look, we're turning back across the lake. See the tree over there? So that's just our trim tabs, not the steering wheel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Brings them back, back up out of the water. Now, if it's really rough and you can't enjoy yourself, I'm going to get this boat going straight. I'm going to show you what I mean by you push the boat down. It'll slow your speed down because you're really dragging the water. We should go get that no wig buoy. Put it in my office. I don't know if that's legal. Okay, going straight again. Water tower. Put them both down. And I know you can't feel on a video, but this boat really slowed down. They grabbed the water. Now I want you to look at the wave coming off the side of the boat. It's coming off the side of the boat way up here because we're pushing the nose down. So watch that wave. Let me turn a little, but I want you to just show the wave, Bill. I'm going to let off the tab. See, notice that the wave came back here. That's because we let the boat come back up on top. That's how you know they work, and that's how you work them. So I'm extremely, extremely impressed with this boat. So far, everything I've touched has worked. Everything that I've looked at's in beautiful condition. So I would strongly recommend this model to anybody looking. Um, we're gonna go back and put it on the trailer and take you for with us. I forgot. This boat has two more switches that I didn't cover. Engine hatch, which we'll look at when we get out of the water. Down in the description below, I'm gonna include a link to an after demo. I got the idea from Expedition Unknown because it keeps my videos shorter. Instead of having a 25 minute de demonstration, I'll have 10 minutes of demo, which is on the backside what most people watch and then they kind of quit watching after I drive the boats with them. So we add that in the description below if you wanna see the exterior and interior real well. I did forget captain's call, oh my gosh. So with the 490 the sound of the cam is amazing. What we're doing here with this button is choosing how we're sending out the exhaust and the water pulled in to keep the engine cool. So we switch this off or on. If we don't want it on, we turn it off. If we want it on, we turn it on. We don't want to turn it off or on if we're going fast. 
The owner's manual says don't switch it if you're over 1800 RPM. Brandon at Used Boats TV says only switch it at idle speed because what turns the flaps, how you're choosing to send out that water and exa exhaust is pencil, thinner than a pencil, lead bars. And maybe not the first time or the 10th time, but one of these times I promise you, you'll break those and it sucks. But now I'm going to leave it on and head back to the boat ramp. It sounds amazing. Let's crank up some tunes. Let's find a station that doesn't suck. remember to trim back down when you go to make a sharp turn now for all my trailer boaters always remember putting the boat in the water is very easy you back it in until you see the rear end float you want to put the plug in before you do that putting it on the trailer is when a lot of people struggle and the reason for that is because they get the trailer too deep in the water if the trailer is deep in the water and the boats float in the water it's only going to come out right by the grace of god you want the front of the trailer where the guide bunks are sticking out of the water so this is your boat put the middle of the boat in the middle of the trailer you can't mess it up that way you can but if you go slow and steady, you won't. We got plenty of depth right here. My last drone, we were doing a spin around this boat and we hit the dock. So there is a DJI Phantom 4 Pro 2 underneath the green boat somewhere. I hope my wife doesn't watch this video. So we're gonna put it on the trailer and then come back and look at the exterior interior condition, uh, part two. For now, let's check out some awesome drone footage and I'll see you on the water.
Thank mm-hmm. you.